Tommy Blackburn. Okay, and then the title, what's, what's your craft here? Stone tool technology, it's also known as flint napping. Spell that second word, flint what? Flint napping. How do you spell that? Like it sounds? Yeah. N-A-P-P-I-N-G? Yep. Okay. Never heard that term. All right, so tell me about flint napping. What, what's all that about? Flint napping and stone tool technology is making stone tools, uh, not only knives and arrowheads, uh, Native Americans made scrapers out of stone. Uh, everything that they used to cut with was made out of stone before steel come along. Like, give me, give me an example of some of the tools that we're talking uh, about. Scrapers, uh, they use hide scrapers, which was a, a sharp edge stone they used for scraping. Uh, they even, they made saws, drills. They made drills? Yes. Uh, they, this is a thumb drill. Uh, they also made spindle drills that they could put in a shaft and spin with their hand. Or a, a, they use them with a bow spindle. Okay. What, what would they use drills? I mean, what, what uh, they drilled wood, drilled stone. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of their pipe making, they had to have a drill to drill the stems, put pipe stems in. Okay. Uh, Do you have a lot of example, different examples down there? I've got. Uh, if you would keep them down there and then just kind of point to them. But okay. Them. okay. The principles of flint napping is it's all based on a hertzical cone. Uh, any stone or glass that'll make a hertzical cone, which is the same cone that pops out of a glass for a shot with a BB gun, that's the type of fracture it has to make to be able to work it. I'm going to hear. I'm, all right, keep going. Okay, well, I'll start off with, you start off with a big spall of rock and you work down to a biface. So we'll, we'll start off getting a piece to work with. Okay. Once you make an initial fracture off of a larger piece of stone, a lot of times the Native Americans and early man didn't have to go any further. Uh, they were starting to create a sharp edge. The edge on this stone on a clean break, and this is not as sharp as some stone, is really sharp. Uh, this piece of leather. Hold it right there. Let me get it close up before you do that. Okay. And this is just a fresh broke piece of stone. And it'll cut leather and you both just but they they had to have a way of getting into their animals and this they found out that they could break the edge and make it real sharp. Well once that edge dulled, they had to have some way of sharpening it back, so they found out that they could take another stone or wood and chip the edges, and every time you chip off the edge, it gets sharper. But as they progressed in the technology, they found out that you went from a spall that had a sharp edge to making a biface. And a biface is a piece of stone that you've worked down to get equal mass on both sides of the center line. Hold it right there, just let me get a close up there. Okay. Tell me that one more time. A biface is working till you get equal mass on both sides of the center line of the rock. And once you get a biface made, then you can go on to make a knife blade or arrowhead, whatever you're needed. Okay. Uh, the first tools that was made was they'd take a stick and sharpen a stick. And then they found out that they could heat harden a stick and then they found out that they could put a, a stone point, a sharpened stone point onto the stick. And then it just kept progressing. But we'll work on a biface here. While you're talking about this technique, what are some of the Native American tribes that were prominent in this area? Uh, we had Cherokee, uh, 
Yadkins, uh, the Hardaways, uh, their ranges ranged into this area. Uh, a lot of the points that are found, uh, you can find some Yadkin stuff. And, but so when you're walking along the riverbank and you find an arrowhead, do you, you kind of know what tribe it's from? Well, a lot of them's close. Uh, most of the points that's in the Savannah River stuff found here, uh, Yadkins, even Hardaway, and all, but the, most of the sites that are found are even further down the Yadkin. But, I mean, can you tell the difference? I mean, was there Yeah, there, there's a different technique in making them. Just, if you don't mind, just give me an example. Uh, the biggest difference in the manufacture of the, the arrowheads is the way that they went about taking the flakes off of it is they took them off. They had a, a certain way that they took the flakes off once they got a biface made. Okay. And a lot of it depended on the tools they used. Uh, most of the tools that was used in the Native American times was they, they used stone, antler, and wood. Now there are different types of stone, the different uh and we were specifically, I'm more interested in just Wilkes County. I mean, do you find different types of stone around the county? Or is it all kind of about the same? Most of what stone is found, or most stone points that are found in Wilkes County are out of two kinds of material. Uh, it's either a type of rhyolite. Uh, most of what rock was found, or stone points that are found in this area, are either made with rhyolite, which is a... It's found all over the world. Uh, the best rhyolite that we dig is in the Ashburn area. Uh, it goes from a real grainy, rough rock, such as this right here, to a real good quality, which is the slicker and shinier the rock is, most of the time, the better it works. And uh, the other points was quartz. Uh, the quartz is a real hard stone to work. Uh, most of it was done with wood. Uh, most it difficult because it it's just a harder stone. It's grainy. Uh, the grainier the rock is, the harder it is to get a smooth fracture. Uh, most of the time, the harder the wood is, or harder the stone is, you need a little more contact time with a tool. And in contact time, it's when you make a percussion hit, which that's another thing, there's two types of flint napping. There is percussion and pressure. Percussion work is all in a hammer style. Uh, well, the harder the stone, the longer the contact time needs to be with the stone. Uh, take uh, on a wooden billets, which I use dogwood mostly. Uh, just a, a big wooden mallet and the contact time it's got some bite to it and the contact time it don't bounce off mm -hmm. and uh, the harder the, the rock is the longer the contact time needs to be <coughs> it's just it's slower work Tell me again, why do you, why would you use a piece of wood rather than another stone? The contact time on some of the stone on real hard material is too short. Uh, it'll, it bounces back so quick that it don't have time to bite into it. But the wood, it's got a little bite and the compression time of the wood lets it stay in contact a little longer. But uh, this is a process of reduction. You can take uh, a hammer stone and do the same thing. Uh, you can take antler. Uh, moose antlers, just because of weight, is better. Uh, use deer antlers. They done a lot of trading. Uh, you find some points where they 
actually went somewhere else and quarried stone and brought in uh, one of the Georgia church. You know, that was close. I've been to a, a Georgia site where they actually quarried on the river. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, you'll find stuff is, you know, that come out of the Midwest even here. Uh, you know, th there was a lot of history that was lost in the Eastern Indians just because of the whites coming in and eradicating. There was nothing preserved by the time that we moved to the west coast, people had decided that they needed to preserve a little bit. And our history is way better on the west coast Indians than they are in the eastern Indians. Mm -hmm. So. What do you, uh, just out of curiosity, and I'm from Oklahoma, so and that's where they walk from all the trail yes. tears. Why, and they do seem very organized over there. Why so, why are they so much over there rather than here? Well, you know, once everybody was pushed out of this area, you know, the east was settled a whole lot quicker than the west of Mississippi was. Mm -hmm. And it was, they wanted an eradication, didn't want them here. And, you know, that, le that lost a lot of history. Right. Why do you do it? Is that, is, that a, is that one reason why you do it, to kind of preserve that history? Just got into it and really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And just once you get started in it, it's hard to quit. <laughs> Uh, there are very few people that do the flint napping. Um, I'd say there's probably 150 people in North Carolina that I know of. Uh, Why do you think it's important to pass that tradition on? Well, it's a dying art. Now, there's there's very few people doing it. Very few young people doing it. Uh, but why? Why should we care about it? Well, if we either care about it or it's gone forever. And this is. It's so a part of our heritage that needs to be carried on. There's a lot of the Native Americans that can't do this art. Mm -hmm. It's died with them. Uh, the steel age, when it come along, you lost the need of working stone. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Europe, they went from a stone age to a copper age to steel age. In North America, we went straight from a stone age to a steel age. And so they was, there was a lot of stuff lost. There was no need of them having to make tools of stone. It's harder to work. And you know, you had to dig the stone and then work the stone. Mm -hmm. And you know, once you broke it, it was gone. And you find a lot of points that are broke. Uh, I've got to, right there is a a stone point uh, that I made and killed a deer with it and it broke the tip of it. Unless you rework it, it's no good now. And that was a lot of the problem with earth points. They they was broke and you know you had to make another one. Mm -hmm. Let me get a shot over here. <clears throat> In the country looking, where's a good place to, to find arrowheads? I mean, do you normally find them along rivers or? You can find a arrowhead just about anywhere. Uh, a lot of bottom lands uh, seem to be good. They was encampments there. The actual arrowheads ain't the best finds, uh, or better finds. Uh, they would make scrapers. Uh, they made them for different things. Uh, they'd make scrapers, you know, made arrow shafts and spear shafts. Mm -hmm. Well, they had to have a way of rounding that down to be able to make it and taper it to where they could use it. And uh, so they would take and break a flake off and but they'd make an indention in the flake to where it was indented they could hold it up and be able to, to scrape a shaft with it. And, but they'd just take and keep scraping till they got it.